The interaction between the environment and peoples throughout the world affects the quality of life on this planet. As citizens of our community, we can participate in decisions impacting our city, state, and nation. In this series, we explore the effects of our influence on the Earth's ecosystems, as well as alternatives and solutions. This is Eco News with your host, Nancy Perlman. Descend into an ancient volcano's crater to be in an area that contains the largest concentration of animals in all of Africa. Hello, I'm Nancy Perlman. On this edition of Eco News, we travel to the famous and incomparable Ngorogoro Crater in Tanzania. From the Serena Lodge in the rim of the Ngorogoro Crater, we journey 2,000 feet into the caldera of a collapsed volcano. Within these 100 square miles are tens of thousands of animals, such as lion, zebra, buffalo, antelope, hippo, hyena, and elephant. Up top, we enjoy the awesome panorama, and deep inside this magnificent natural amphitheater, we get a close-up look at the animals. Even an endangered rhinoceros lets us take pictures of her baby. Stay with us to view the incredible array of wildlife. My name is Abid Kawaja, born in Kenya, uh, raised in Kenya and educated in the States. The American public, having this knowledge and this wealth of experience in having seen from their own countries and, and various um, projects which are in the United States, for the benefit of the environment, when they come and travel in Tanzania, can draw close comparisons and see that in our country we are taking up a lot of time, effort and natural resource to educate people, to educate the public, to educate the local park authorities and tour operators who are running safaris in Tanzania to ensure that we as a team, we as the Africans, preserve our land so that our grandchildren will be able to experience the same. When people come to travel in, in, in any destination, particularly Tanzania, a lot of the revenue that is generated by them coming to travel in our country benefits a lot the local communities because it creates employment. Employment is what fuels the nation. And tourism is very important in our country. Africa is an experience that instills in your mind well-being, makes you realize how small we are as human beings in this great vast expanse, where we will not be able to survive if left unattended. Therefore, come experience it with us. We will take you and hold your hand through the whole experience. I think in the world that we're living in today, every creature and every animal has a need to be here, and that's why it's part of this great creation. There are some animals which are endangered, for instance, our rhinos, our wild dogs, etc. There are others which are plentiful, the wildebeest, might, the wildebeest uh, for instance, and the zebras. We have millions of those. Um, but they all have a very intricate balance to play in the whole ecosystem. It is our job and the job of the National Park Authorities and you as a client, a tourist who will come to visit our country to ensure that we preserve this for future generations to see. Come experience Africa because it's a memory that you will take away forever. Rain or shine, a drive down the 2,000 feet into the Ngorogoro Crater gives us a chance to get close to a variety of wildlife. It's fun to watch the monkeys and baboons, the elephants, the elands, the gazelles, the flamingos, the cranes, and all the other wildlife found among the sacred fig trees, the yellow bark acacia, and the wild mangoes. 
Uh, Ngorongoro Preta is a caldera that was formed uh, over a million years ago after a volcano collapsed. The crater is about 12 uh, miles wide and uh, 1,700 meters deep. It's a home to an extraordinary variety of big game and bird life. On the rim of the crater is a Ngorongoro Serena Lodge, masterfully built to blend in the natural environment. The building itself, a master piece of art, is covered in ivy and plant. The building has a, the lodge has a 75 rooms, all of them with uh, private balconies that have an uh, unrivaled view of uh, the caldera, sometimes referred to as the eighth wonder of the world or Noah Zak. We provide five star service. We have uh, a natural environmentalist within the lodge who can uh, take our guests through the very varying uh, rounds, seeing uh, what nature has to offer. Next, uh, about an hour's drive from the lodge, we have the Old Vai Gorge, which uh, is referred to as the birthplace of man. Coming to Ngorongoro Crater is like coming home to your birthplace, the first place that uh, man is believed to have born. And uh, this, uh, in particular, together with the wondrous uh, ecology of the area, and the lush vegetation that uh, remained behind after the volcanic activity and the big uh, game and uh, bird life that is found in this area is a reason why you should uh, on your safari take as Gorongoro crater as the first uh, visit in Gorongoro is a unique place because that's the only uh, place in the world you'll find uh, the largest intact caldera. Now, this caldera has the game and the bad life that is found nowhere else. To experience this, you can only visit the Ngorongoro and see for yourselves. My name is Bura Akonai. I'm an environmentalist, environmental officer for the Ngorongoro Serena Lodge. I'm taken here as a graduate on resource and environmental management. Somalia I specialize on the four resources, uh, human resources, soil resources, water resources, forest resources, and wildlife resources. So I speak with special in environmental economics to make people find that the natural resources are not free goods. They have got some cost when you are using. So this notion is an understandable by most of the society, and that is what I want to penetrate from my environmental policy uh, specialization. Gorongoro crater. It is originated from the earth crust movement, which is uh, volcanic in nature. The tectonic force within the earth crust, and therefore it is a connection of the great Eastern African Rift Valley. It is a result from the sinking down of the volcanic cones. It is sometimes referred to be a caldera, but due to its uniqueness, it was called as a crater. It has got a different biodiversity, ranging from animals to vegetation. The Gorongoro area, it's a multiple land use concept, and therefore it accommodates a lot of things. Here it accommodates wildlife, pupils, uh, tourism, ecological study as Olivai Gorge, if you heard about. Uh, vegetation, some are valuable, uh, medicinal in nature, to Maasai peoples, and therefore they use for their kettles and as well as for human medicines. You must also know about the, how the cultural values we are taking into practice. We also normally meet the Maasai peoples and uh, provide uh, some educational status. Uh, most of the soil nature here is volcanic in origin and the rocks are granite in nature. The Gorongoro crater floor is amazing and uh, it has got a permanent water resource that allows most animals to stay their time throughout the year. You can find that there are three lakes, in which one is fresh water, other is swampy, and the other one salt lake. The area is climatically two major seasons. It has got dry season and uh, hot and wet season. Wet season starts from uh, November and then it ends at the May. And the dry season starts from June and November. 
Actually, June and July are extremely cold, and uh, May and April are totally wet, and that sometimes it's discouraging tourism and uh, impassable to the crater flow. Although it goes is relating also to the crater because it is within the same chain of the Western Rift Valley arm. It is, might be a small crater that have been connected to it because it is also a result of the sinking down of the molten magma which have come out during the volcanic material eruptions. The visitors normally become attracted and uh, because you see it, the way you want to meet literature in his place and uh, what is expected is not what he see. This crater is uh, very wide. Actually, the Gorongoro itself cover uh, 8,300 square kilometers, but the Gorongoro itself uh, cover a crater cover 260 square kilometers. So it is a wide and the biggest and accommodated different species of animals, from predators, scavengers, to those uh, herbivores and carnivores. Uh, actually, they say that uh, the survey which has been done from the history observed that there are about 25,000 different species of animals within the crater flow. So you can find it's an amazing and, um, and unique ecological system. Uh, in 1951, that's when the Serengeti National Park was established and this part was included in that. But in 1963, due to the Maasai practicing, that Serengeti National Park, due to its climatic nature, was found to be incapable to accommodate uh, human resources as well as well. Life. So this part was partially set and the government put it in multiple land use for those forestry, wildlife and uh, human settlement. That's why you can find it is unique because uh, it has got a different special status. And many others, I might invite most of them to visit the area so as to find learning from the geological and how of the environmental setup it seems. I understand they are environmentally concerned, but they have got much literature on what ecology is about, natural features can be. I understand most of them might be putting on the artificial forest. But here we put on natural forest, a natural wildlife, and what is happening as a Gorongoro Serena Lodge is environmentally concerned, uh, conscious, and uh, committed. We are only trying to promote all the indigenous vegetation in which they can also watch out. And what ecologically is very sustainable, and what is uh, being done here during construction, we took all the indigenous vegetation to our nursery. We put all the traditional, and when we find any animals destroyed, the one which we replanted, then we replant it again. That's why you can find how the buildings look like the environment itself, it is, it show the culture of the place. You can watch from the distance, you cannot observe. We also practice the rainwater harvesting as an economic resource, so that uh, it can host to our water resource. So every resource we normally put into practice to reharvest. We have got an uh, energy system control, sanitation systems, as well as uh, we have got the underground electrification so that to remove from the sounding so on the animals. Uh, we practice whatever possible for the environmental management, at least to bring all the environmental alternatives that bring a sustainable concept. Mahmoud Jad Mohammed, my title is Managing Director for Serena Hotels in East Africa. Serena Hotels, are here to ensure that your safari is incredible, unforgettable, and that you will become a repeat visitor to Kenya, Tanzania, and Africa, uh, because that is what uh, we are in business for. Over the next few days, you are, I believe, going to experience the best of Tanzania. You will not only experience uh, great wildlife, you will learn quite a lot about the flora and the fauna and the people uh, and I hope that some of our other bush activities and special events will provide you with an experience that you will not forget. We invest a lot of money and time in our people. The company has a future, has a great future because our people are all local people who want to work with us. I think most importantly that uh, we do not uh, exploit nature, we must conserve nature. We must also ensure that the benefits of tourism are enjoyed by the local population around our properties. The local population must see benefits out of tourism and there is no point in just providing money. 
we must invest in projects that are sustainable. Projects must provide benefit to the local population for many years to come. One of the things that I, I think uh, we feel a little unhappy about is the fact that quite often the media um, portrays a very negative image of this part of the world. Uh, security issues sometimes are blown out of proportion. Uh, yes, no destination in the world can guarantee 100% safety, but believe me, statistics prove that East Africa is a safer destination than any other destination in Africa. We love the Americans, we love the American tourists, and we would like to see a lot more of them here. Uh, and as a group, we give 15% of our revenues to the local county councils, or the Kenya Wildlife Service, or in some cases, the local village. Serena Hotels and Lodges has certainly provided fantastic service and fine accommodations, delicious food. Thank you so very much. Olduvai Gorge is one of the most important archaeological sites on Earth. The geological strata exposed in the gorge reveal a remarkable record of animal and human evolution from about 2 million until 15,000 years ago. Let's take a look at where Lewis and Mary Leakey made some very famous discoveries. Gambo, how are you today? My name is Ole Moita and I'm working with Antiquities Division as a curator of the Old Pai Museum. If you look on the floor of the middle of the gorge, the flat black spots you see are volcanic rocks. Lava and basalts, which were blown by the neighboring volcanic highlands. They are the basement here, and they are two million years ago. The correct name of the gorge is Old Pie, a Maasai name for this plant right here, wild sisal. Scientifically, it's known as San Saveri Rehebriana. The Maasai who lives around here gave the name of the plant to the whole area, for the same plant grows all along the gorge. But then, it was mispronounced Old Pai, but the first discoverer of the gorge was a German man named Kadwinkel who came and found himself very accidentally down the gorge while chasing butterflies. Instead he found fossils of the now extinct elephant known as Dinotherium, three-toed horse Hipparon, which he took to Berlin Museum for further investigations. Well, that was 1913 when Tanzania was then Tanganyika, German East Africa. In Berlin, those fossils are also much interesting except that the Kaiser sent an expedition here led by a geologist named Hans Reck, and they found a lot of animal remains with a skeleton Homo sapiens. Professor Leakey, who made the Old Pai Gorge world famous, who was the son of a British missionary born in Kenya, visited Berlin in 1928 as a tourist, and he saw the remains from Old Pai at the first time there. After examining them, for he was a qualified doctor in anthropology, and he was convinced that stone tools could be found all by God. In that case, he joined the second German expedition which arrived here in 1931. And the very day they stepped in the gorge, Dr. Leakey recognized the stone tools a few hours after the arrival. Thereafter, the German professor formally gave him a scientific ride to work it on in Old Pai Gorge for the Germans lost their colony and the English people cover. So Dr. Leakey started working here, later on joined by Mary, his wife, and uh, they've been working here as time and funds permitted them, but it was after working here for 28 years when Mary Leakey found the first hominid skull. That is from 1931 to 1959 when Mary Leakey found the skull of Nutcracker Man. The most interesting and unique thing about the Old Pai Gorge is that during Bedouin and Two Times, according to the history of geological investigations, there was an alkaline lake here. It occupied an area of 20 by 15 kilometers. It was fed by fresh water streams from the Ngorongoro Highlands. So that plenty of water encouraged a big population of animal and hominids to come and live on the shore of the Old Pai Lake. It was similar to the present Lake Manyara today, but eventually it disappeared because of earth movements when the gorge was partly opened by faults of the Great Rift Valley system. So a lot of extinct fossil remains of animals and artifacts were found in those two stratas. Apart from those, two different kinds of hominids were found in the first layer, and that means they were living contemporaneously at the same time. 
The first found, which was found by Dr. Mary Leakey in 1959, July 17th, was Australopithecus boise or Zinja anthropus. He has got a marginal crest and a massive jaw, large thick teeth, to enable himself to grind hard seeds, for he was a vegetarian not only, and that's how he was nicknamed Nutcracker Man. The other one is Homo habilis, a man with ability of using hands and made the first primitive tools, nicknamed the Handyman, and both of them are 1.8 million years ago. Homo erectus found the second layer. He stood fully upright and made handling tools and is one and a half million years ago. The third one is poor, nothing found, simply because it was too hot and dry when it was deposited so the dry climate was very unsuitable for human habitation. But in the fourth layer, Homo erectus found again, dated back to 400 southern years. And in the fifth strata, Homo sapien found, dated back to 17 southern years before Christ. In 1978, Dr. Mary Leakey found the hominid footprints at Lytoli. That's why the side goats start from the south, and they belonged to Australopithecus afarensis of 3.6 million years ago. That the same species with a skeleton nicknamed Lucy, which was found in Ethiopia. Lucy is a forensis of three and a half million years ago. But the name Lucy was only given to the skeleton simply because during that day of the discoveries, the scientists were listening and dancing the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> know the song? Yes. Yeah. Great. In 1995 August, we had a joint expedition of Tanzanian scientists from the University of Dar es Salaam with Americans from the University of Rutgers in New Jersey and covered the mandible of Homo habilis of 1.8 million years ago. Excavation is still going on down here every June, July, and August, for there are still a lot to be found in the deposit. We have a museum here for those who didn't go in, which composed of fossil remains of animals, skull, stone tools, cast of the footprints. It is a self-reading, easy to go through, and for us allowed. And so, friends, I'm ending on my brief, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Aziz Hadji, born in Kenya, and I've been living in Tanzania for five years. I'm the director of the operations in Tanzania. Compared to other areas in Africa that offer wildlife uh, safaris, um, especially southern, southern Africa, uh, Tanzania and Kenya both have a lot more animals, a higher density populated uh, areas with, with wild animals, and a bigger variety too. Tanzania has an area of over 900,000 square kilometers and 25% of that has been set aside as wildlife reserves, national parks and conservation areas. So you've got such a huge area set aside and a larger, a bigger chance actually to view game or wildlife. I mean, when you travel with Big Five tours and safaris, you've, you've got an operator who's been operating in the area and experienced in the area, born in the area, and a company that's been operating for over 30 years. So you've got a wealth of experience amongst the directors of the company and of course amongst the hand-picked staff. Uh, your safari really is made by a ground operator. It makes or breaks an entire wildlife safari in Kenya Tanzania. It's your driver guide. It's your driver guide, it's your vehicle. You spend most of your time on safari in a vehicle, viewing animals. And if your driver guide is, is not knowledgeable, has got no charisma, no personality, uh, you've just wasted a whole lot of American dollars to come out to East Africa. You've got numerous types of safaris in Tanzania. If you've got, you've got a group who wants to go out and just do the cultural aspect of Tanzania, we have numerous tribes. We have over 142 different tribes in Tanzania. So if you want to do a cultural safari, we'll arrange that for you. We will still take you to the game viewing areas because naturally someone who wants to see the culture of Tanzania will definitely want to still visit the, the game viewing areas. So we, we arrange that sort of stuff for you. You've got people who want to do just ornithological safaris and we'll take them out specifically to view birds. We've got driver guides were specifically trained as birders and they know every single bird found in northern Tanzania or even in East Africa and doesn't mean you'll not see a lion or an elephant will predominantly take you out on an 80% birding safari and 20% uh, the rest of what we have to offer. I mean there's, there's so much to experience in Tanzania I mean most most people will come out to Tanzania and spend between five and ten days on safari it's definitely not enough you need more time than that in five or ten days, we will show you what we feel you have to see in that sort of time frame. But you could spend a month here and not get tired. 
definitely not get tired. You'd want more and more and more. It's an experience I cannot really describe in words. It's an emotion. It's, it's, it's a feeling of being out there in the open. It's a feeling of looking at endless miles of, of nothingness, of, of nature the way it used to be before mankind came along and destroyed it. So really, we want to take you out in the safari so you can experience what I've been even going to America to try and sell. And it's so difficult to sell because you're not just selling a vacation and a resort. That's not what we're trying to sell. What we're trying to sell is, is an emotion. It's a feeling. It's when you're out there smelling the fresh air or smelling the aromas of Africa, the sounds of nature, the endless plains, the nothingness. That is the fullness of it all. The nothingness and the fullness of it all. It's, it's all an emotion. Come to Tanzania. Let us be your host. Let us show you this beautiful and magnificent country. Thank you so very much. This has been really a fantastic wildlife safari. I certainly look forward to coming back to Tanzania again. Our wildlife safari on the floor of the Ngorogoro Crater in Tanzania has been fantastic. A visitor is guaranteed to see so many of East Africa's wildlife on a trip to this area. And for viewers who would like more information or a free sample copy of the Compendium newsletter, an address and telephone number will be on the screen at the end of the credits. We love to hear from you, so please call or write. And be sure to join us again for another edition of Eco News, your best source of current environmental news that affects you and your future. On behalf of our nonprofit organization, Educational Communications, thank you for your support. I'm Nancy Perlman wishing you a natural, unspoiled environment. <music>